Hi everybody, I am The Reading Tortie and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be doing the book review for Dream Boy by Jim Grimsley. Pretty good book. It was published in 1995 by Algonquine Books of Chapel Hill. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. And it's uh, shelved as fiction, gay fiction, and LGBTQ on Goodreads, which I totally agree with. It is also the receiver of the ALA Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual Book Award of 1996, also so known as the Stonewall Book Award. So, pretty awesome little book. The story follows the blossoming and deepening relationship between Nathan and his neighbor, Roy. They're both high school boys, I believe. Roy is a senior and Nathan is a junior. Nathan also goes through a relationship issues with his father so you know very early on that he is the subject of some form of abuse as the story progresses it kind of heightens with the climax of the book so it's really well paced um nathan's family rents the home on roy's parents property and that's how they come to be and you know quickly that it's there's something more there and it's really nicely set up so the book sets you up really well for this great emotional roller coaster of a ride. Throughout the book, you see the abuse that Nathan receives, and it really explains why Nathan is the way that he is, as opposed to Roy, who lives a relatively healthy family life. Um, Nathan lives in a state of constant and, con and a constant measuring and caution, and everything is about weighing out the pros and the cons. And it's really well done in a way that's believable, and I think that if any reader has ever been in that sort of situation, personally, I thought it was very realistic. So there is some sort of abuse. So if you have a history of abuse in any sort of capacity, this might be a problem for you. Otherwise, it's a fantastic book. I absolutely loved it. I think I read it almost completely in one sitting, which, I mean, it's not all that impressive, but it was roughly like 9, 9 o'clock at night that I started it. And then, you know, a couple hours later, I'm still reading and I'm crying because it's just so exquisitely well written. The characters are Nathan and Roy. And there's also Nathan's mom, who I think is a very, she's a very tragic character. Nathan's also tragic, but there's just something heart-wrenching about a mother that has admitted defeat in the face of, I cannot protect my child. And her kind of just being a shadow of a person and a shadow of existence, just so terrified and horrified and just so disgusted with herself that she cannot protect her son the way that a mother should. So the characters are all really realistic and believable. They're really well fleshed out. Roy has his own things going on, but Nathan's problems really eclipse his. This review is also going to be a little more difficult because this book is really spoiler heavy. So I have to be careful what I say or else a pretty crucial part of the book is going to be ruined. And I know a lot of people don't like spoilers. Some do, you know, but mo most don't. So I'm going to do my best not to spoil anything in this little gem precious book of, it, of ours. It is told from the third person that mainly follows Nathan through his emotional, psychological, and spiritual abuse and his coping with it all. The the narrator really makes you feel present in the book, especially in Nathan's head. So I really liked how immersive it was in that sense. This book also really magnified and highlighted the vulnerabilities that Roy and Nathan go through and that Roy, Roy particularly feels. He's more of a foil to Nathan, as stated earlier. And it's just so funny because you would think that Nathan would be the one that's a little more vulnerable and insecure and just trying to tiptoe around this. But it's really Roy that's a little more lost than Nathan, ironically, despite the fact that Nathan is the one receiving all of this horrendous treatment at home. Um, Roy is the one that has less of a direction. And I thought it was so exquisitely, beautifully well done. And it was so un unpredictable and unexpected. And I really appreciated that. So. The characters are really well written. Really like that. The setting is in a rural town. It's in a rural town, like like small country town. Itty bitty small. 
Airbnb saw as farms. Like Roy drives the bus to their high school, small. That's how small this is. And it also has a very religious setting. From the very beginning, I think you're introduced to everybody after Roy has gotten back from church before Nathan and his family have come back from church. So you get this feeling very quickly that religion and God and spirituality and traditional values are very, very important to these two families, despite the fact that Nathan's dad has his, has his problems. So it's very small town and traditional. You can see it in the constant way that the characters interact. This greatly influences Roy and Nathan and their biases, their hesitations. Nathan is less inclined to it simply because of the stuff that he has already gone through. But Roy is still struggling with his moral values, his religious values, his personal place in the relationship, lack of relationship with Nathan and what is Nathan to him. Nathan has a much more steady ground as to where he stands as far as like everything in life because he's had to figure that out fairly quickly versus Roy who is really affected by the setting and his very narrow-minded friends who weren't really exposed to this. There's a lot of tension as far as sexual realization and a whole lot of sexual questioning, not only on Roy and Nathan's part, but also on a third character that, yeah, we kind of could see it coming, sort of, if you're as paranoid as I am, but it really just showed how oppressed the environment is because of the traditional views and just the narrow-mindedness of everything going on at the time. So the setting is really lovely in its complex simplicity, not to sound cool, but it really is very simply written. So this book is clearly aimed at a much younger audience than, you know, <clears throat> Call Me By Your Name, but it's still absolutely beautiful. And the sentences are simple. There's not this long-winded thought process that, you know, you forget where the heck you started. It's all very straightforward. And the characters are all seemingly very simple characters, but there's so many nuances that the, that the, the writer develops that really shows how complex this, this book is and how complex all of the emotions are. And it's just really, really well done. And I'm not ecstatic about this in the way that that Call Me By Your Name possessed me. I'm ecstatic about this in a very muted and just life-altering way because this book is just so, so beautiful. And I just, it, it's a beautiful book. So, <laughs> moving on, sorry. The plot and the conflict to me go hand in hand. I don't think that there could be a plot without a conflict and a conflict without a plot. You can't have one without the other in this particular book, in my opinion. Because the book really is Nathan versus everyone living in their safe little bubble. Nathan versus his father's crazy, just craziness. Nathan versus his mom's depression versus his mom's ineptitude to be a mother and just her, her defeat as a, a parent. Nathan versus Roy and his misgivings and his hesitations and his surroundings. Roy versus Roy, uh, Nathan versus Roy's friends, you know? So it's just Nathan versus everything around him. And he copes with it so well. And he takes everything in stride. And Nathan is never really disheveled. Everything is calculated. And it's really haunting and sad that this young man, this boy who's a junior or sophomore, I believe, has to live in such a way that everything in his life is measured everything in his life has to be like okay if I do this should I do this this or this and it's all very weighing and is this more is, is this the lesser of two evils sort of situation so the plot and the conflict really is Nathan realizing where he stands about stuff that he's already pretty firm on and what his next move is because as the story progresses it gets more and more hazardous at home for Nathan and his relationship with Roy starts to go rocky Roy's friends are not helping whatsoever they're kind of jerks they are jerks some of them one of them isn't and so Nathan really is the driving force as well as the catalyst, almost everything that he does 
influences this book and it is one of his decisions that really sets sets up the place because of the lesser evil situation for the tragic and I think unavoidable culmination of what drives Nathan and Roy to the resolution. So the resolution to me is painful, it's hopeful, it's heart-wrenching, and it's just pure acceptance of their fate, themselves, their stance with their religion, Nathan in his life, Roy deciding where he belongs, and the ending was mesmerizing. It, I sat there and I kind of just, this is the way it's supposed to end. And it was so lovely and beautiful. And I highly recommend this book for anybody looking for that emotional coming of age fix of these two kids struggling, not with, you know, a lot of obvious external circumstances, but more struggling inward with themselves, with each other and trying to find what makes them truly happy without trying to hurt people like their parents that don't deserve to be hurt either because this is all just good people minus Nathan's dad that are just they're just trying to find how to live who they really are without really screwing everyone else over and you know causing chaos because of their religious views so this book highly recommend it it is ladled in ambiance you never once you never once forget where you are, what you're reading. And for me, there is a permeating desolation and isolation in absolutely every simple poetic word that is written in this book. I feel the absolute loneliness. I feel the absolute desperation to try to make things better for things to be better, but they're not. And it's an all-consuming silence that no amount of dialogue or action or violence will ever take away. Like, there's, there's stuff going on, but I still feel the isolation and the loneliness and the silence of the book. And I feel Nathan alone, and it makes me so sad. And the only times that he's not alone is when he's with Roy. But that, that silence and that, that pain and that isolation is still there. It's lingering, and when Nathan parts with Roy, it just kind of consumes us again, and we're in our darkness again, and we're in our isolation and I'm confused as the reader but Nathan's not Nathan has all the answers so it's just it's really well written I so my experience with this book was was pretty terrible it was pretty uh, fantastically terrible um I started this book and the back says that it leads to ultimate tragedy so I'm like okay let's do this Torty you got this tragedy let's be prepared so I was ready to struggle with my life and my will to live and my heart, and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. I can battle this. I'm prepared, mentally, psychologically, emotionally prepared. And as I sat there and I read, I was lulled into a state of beautiful, just comfort. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. How can this be tragic? And then slowly, it kind of creeps up, and something negative happens. And you're like, oh, oh, okay, I, I, I can get over this. I can, I can rise up above this. And then something else happens, just a little bit worse. And you're like, okay, I, I got this. I, I get the pace now. But then before you realize it, you're like on page 120 or however long this book is. And you realize you, you got everything taken from you. Your absolute will to survive and to live, you know, you gave it away. The reaper came to your door and was like, hey, I dropped something. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. And you gave it away. And then you're like, wait, I need that. But they're gone. And that's exactly how it went. And that's how I felt. And when I came up for water or for air or whatever from, from the drowning emotions that I was feeling unknowingly, I realized I want to just sleep because this book has consumed me in the most beautiful way possible. And I sat there and I was pretty much crying the entire time. And every time Nathan and Roy had a scene or they came into contact and when Roy begged him to, to please be with him and Roy was trying to be masculine and macho, and he couldn't, and he wasn't, and Nathan just comforted him. I just sat there, and I wanted, and I cried, and I did cry, and I didn't want to cry. I did cry. And it was just so, just disarming, and just a loss. And when I was nearly finished with this book, I'm like, I don't know what to do with my life right now. It's a Friday night, and my, my weekend is just obsolete. It's irrelevant. Nothing matters. 
And it was because of this precious gem of a book that still gets me emotional to this day. And so I watched the movie, which I'm going to post a review of in the topic of discussion for this book. And I cried throughout the entire movie. And then I picked up the book again and I kept crying because it was so beautiful. It's simply written. It's not Call Me By Your Name. It's easy to get through. It really is. But it is absolute poetry. It is simple, complex, genuine, honest poetry. And I believed every single word that was written in here. And I believed the emotions that Nathan and Roy felt. And I believed that Roy truly loves Nathan in his own way. And he was trying. And I believe Nathan loved Roy. And it's just it's a really good book, y'all. Seriously. So if you're ready for the emotional hurricane that you're going to feel with this book and just the all-encompassing ambiance that this book is going to give you and that this book provides, I know it's your cost, <laughs> um, pick it up. If you've been debating it, you, you really should pick it up. But be prepared that the tragedy here isn't something that's going to assault you in your face and, you know, guns and, and swords and everything is going to be a battle for your life it's going to be very unassuming and very low-key and then you're going to realize i just lost but you're going to be so happy in that defeat because the book is lovely so that is my review for this book um let me know what you guys thought if you think this was a good book if you didn't think it was a good book or if you just never want to pick it up because of my review because i scared you guys so please let me know and thank you guys for stopping by and be safe and I'll catch you next time. Bye.